Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Survival Org Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Connors. I have with me one of the best players from Survivor Nicaragua, the one, the only, Nayanka. Nayanka, say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. Good morning. And happy, fantastic, fabulous Friday. <laughs> so let's jump right into this. How did you first get involved with the show? Well, uh, honestly, I knew about Survivor growing up, but I never really thought about, like, auditioning for it or anything. Mm -hmm. um, it was just being at the right place at the right time and running into the right people, and I was just, I was on the beach walking. They thought I had the look. They thought that I had the personality. Three days later, I have an interview, so it just kind of, like, happened. Just one of those things that just kind of just happens in life. When you knew you were going to be um, on, what did you do to, to prepare to get on the island? When I knew that I was going to be on Survivor, I basically, I tried to watch as many seasons as possible to understand the game, but one thing that I learned from preparing from it and actually playing the game is there's no way you could prepare for a game like Survivor. Mm -hmm. It's all about, like, just just living your life and applying what you go through in your everyday life to a skilled game like that. So there's just anybody out there that's really thinking about considering ever going on there, there's no way you could prepare. It's more of a mental game than physical. Because whatever your mind will do, your, your mind can tell your body to move faster than you really think your body can go. So mm -hmm. there's no way you could prepare for it. Um, uh, when you first got there, what did you think of the twist of old people versus young people? I was upset. Like, before the game started, I, w I saw a lot of older people. I recognized a lot of older people, but my thing was, I wonder how old they are. I didn't think it was going to be a twist, but as the game went on, um, before the game, like pre-game, and Jeff said, you know, this is young versus old, I was kind of like, okay, we're going to win. We're going to blow them out the water. And we did. The old <laughs> pitch happened, and then it was a whole new ball game, and it messed up my entire strategy when I got switched over to the older tribe. And I was, like, actually one of the oldest people on my tribe. So, yeah, let's talk about it. What was the early days of your game like, and what were some of the early alliances that you had? Um, the very first alliance that I had was with Benry and Alina. And no one really knew about that because that kind of, like, formed – like day two, day three, um, but my original alliance was the the known minority alliance with myself, Brenda, and Sash. Uh, but you know, you just got to be really careful when you try to start an alliance early in the game because people change and like they thought that I was, you know, this sweet girl and I ended up being the one that stabbed you in the in the back and mm -hmm. in the face, laughed about it, and then smiled and walked away. So you can't really you can't really predict anybody will play like a like. Like Philip, for instance, right now, I noticed him coming back, like returning. He's not playing that that uh, airhead role with this gorilla and a lion. He's actually playing to win. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you you just can't judge a book by its cover. Why did the uh, uh, Alina Benry Alliance fail? I didn't see them as some. I I couldn't see them as people that I would take to the end with me, because Alina's just as physical as me, and mm -hmm. she's hot. Then you have Benry, who is super physical, and he's hot. If you have too many good-looking people, <laughs> you have this dreadlock girl with a nose ring, she tattooed, you know, they're going to go for either Alina or Benry before me. So it made more sense to have this pretend alliance with Alina and Benry and then form our real alliance, and that's who's back that I held. So, I mean, I ended up taking control over um, each alliance without, my, uh, without each alliance knowing that I was in another alliance. So I actually had three different alliances, because I also had one with Dan and Fabio right before I quit. Oh, wow. What would you have done with Dan and Fabio? How would that have changed the game if you didn't quit? Well, for instance, I'm always going off on Fabio. I'm always yelling at him at tribal councils. I'm always saying, screw you, telling him he needs to be in a bubble wrap. But he was like kind of, he played the smartest game. He got along with everyone. And that's why I walked up to him and was like, hey, Dude, I have the idol, you know, you want to be in an alliance. He was like, sure. So I told him I'm going to bring Dan. Dan already has money, you know. So nobody's really going to want to vote for him because he hasn't done anything other than ride this wave all the way to the end. So if it was between Fabio and myself, even if I didn't get the million, I know I would have walked away with at least 100000 Oh, that's so a really that, good strategy. It would have been, like, perfect. So, I mean, the type of game that I played was the type of game where I know I definitely would have been in the final three because I was not liked, but I played a smart game. Well, I completely agree with you that no matter what scenario I see happening, 
you not leaving the game, if you wouldn't have quit, you would have been in the final three, and I think you would have easily pulled second place. I think someone would have voted for you, and maybe you could have even won. Um, do you look back and regret quitting? Every day I regret it, but, you know, things happen in life, and sometimes you just cannot question it. Like, my worst thing in life is being cold. I cannot stand being cold. I think all of the world knows Nayaka does not like the rain. I can't stand it. And I knew me surfing through the game with the idol for as long as I did, something was going to happen. I was definitely going to get tested, and I got tested in the worst way, and that was with the weather. Now, if my clothes were different, if I would have been like, if I would have had the opportunity to wear a jacket like Fabio, or have pants and a long sleeve like Sash, or a hat, boots, and jeans and a long sleeve like Chase, I would have definitely stayed in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, Kelly Purple and myself, we had the least amount of clothes. So we were freezing, and we would get pulled to do confessionals in the rain. None of us really had the chance to be warm. And then you have Brenda, who's, you know, she's outside, outdoorsy. She's built for it. Brenda mm-hmm. is actually built for it. Shout out to Brenda. I hope she wins. <laughs> Shout out. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That, that, that's, a, that's a crazy, crazy game. But things happen for a reason. I wish I didn't quit. But I have gained so much from quitting the game. I have a pre-grant opening for my business partners and myself tomorrow called Doggy Paws. Doggy Paws World in Long Beach, California. We're located downtown. We are an indoor and outdoor uh, service, and we're going to be known worldwide. So some of my fans are already supporting us, mm-hmm. and I thank the fans uh, for all of their positive energy. Thank you for calling me and even asking me that question because a lot of people, they go, well, do you regret it? Well, hell yeah, I regret it. I don't have a million dollars. <laughs> I learned a lot, and I took a lot from that that experience, and that's really what it becomes um, during the game. It, it, you think about the million dollars because it's a grand prize, but then it becomes like, how can I get through today? How can I make it through to tomorrow? And when you plug that into your real life, that is really like, how can I get through tomorrow? And every day we're like, how can we get that million dollars? How can we be, how can we be rich? How can we mm-hmm. how can we be successful? And that's not just in the game; that's in real life. So do I regret it? Yes, but at the same time, I wouldn't change a thing if I can do it over. If I could do it over again now, now that I know the things that I know now, I wouldn't quit. But, yeah, I, I do regret it, <laughs> of course. Um, would you go back to play again? Hell, yeah, I would. I would play it in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. And this time I would play with intentions of thinking of my fans. I can't let myself down, but I don't want to let them down because now I have to go throughout my life wondering how far could I have really made it. Could I have won? Could I have been in the final two, final three? So I'm going to always have these questions. So if I were to return, I definitely would not quit. I would play a strong game. I don't. I think this time, instead of me stabbing you in your back, making you wonder who stabbed me in the back, it will always be in your face. <laughs> Do you think that's a you better know, strategy? I think it's a damn good cha- strategy for Nayaka. It might not work for other people, but it would definitely work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, Nobody agrees. Strategy, but look at how far I got before I quit. I, like I said, I'm positive you would have made the final three, and that seems to be the general consensus online, is that you easily would have made the final tribal council. Why do you think Cripple Kelly got such a bad edit? Um, Purple Kelly's edit was so horrible because every day Purple Kelly wanted to quit. <clears throat> every day she wanted to quit, so it kept the, the camera crew on edge because they didn't know, because at that time they didn't apply the Nayaka rule to where you can't, you can't quit the game and go to the jury and still get paid. So she got to edit like that because she quit. I, If you ask me, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but two two, I carried that season. If I wasn't as crazy as I was, that season would have been boring. And because I was such a big character on my season, I held that season, they wanted me to leave first. So if you if you look at the place setting, instead of giving me, what, what eighth or ninth or whatever, they booted me up one. You know, like it pushed mm-hmm. me or pushed down one because, oh, this bitch could have went to the end. She could have made it really, really far. She quit. So they gave me the the horrible edit, but they never showed me um, giving my my tribe mates massages or making them blankets out of leaves or making them pillows out of leaves or catching 100 crabs in 30 minutes. Like, they never showed you guys that. Purple Kelly really didn't do anything, nor was she a personality. And the one thing that they showed was Kelly saying, you get to milk your own milk. (laughs) <laughs> and I was so angry. out of all the things she said, they'll choose that. 
The blonde uh, entertainment. Milk your own milk. They also had her saying, I have nothing left to suck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> They did her so long. <laughs> was your edit, edit an accurate portrayal of you? Oh, hell oh yeah. That, none of that was scripted. That was me. Uh, that was Nyanka from South Central L.A. trying to play to win a million dollars. Now, if you stand between me and a million dollars, I'll, I'll stab you in the back. I'll throw you under the bus. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> you can be in a until I get as far as I want to go with you, and then you're gone. So that was actually how I played, but I wish they would have showed the softer side of me, not the angry black woman, Nyanka. Because that was just horrible. All of us black girls, we get such a bad edit, and I feel so bad for Francesca. Because she's really only played the game for like six days. Uh-huh. But we don't even, you know, and you guys got a big dose of Nyanka, and I hope that that pill was followed by some water because you guys got a big dose of me. <laughs> well, the season was a lot less interesting once you were gone. I will say that. I remember watching it. First, I was going, oh, my God, two people are quitting, and then go, oh, I don't really care who wins now. You <laughs> oh, that's awesome. What was your take on Brenda, and are you proud of getting rid of her when you did? Did you think that was necessary? I love Brenda, and I think that Brenda is um, a forest princess. I love her to death. I wanted to get her out a lot sooner. I didn't want her to stay in the game as long as she stayed in it because she was going to have all of those boys wrapped around her finger. She was really smart with knowing how to cut down the bamboos, how to weave, how to fish, and that's a threat because if you're if you're going to feed us, who's going to vote, vote you out because you're going to be feeding us. We need to eat. Mm-hmm. But I saw her as a potential threat. So when I jumped ship and everybody was finally on board, it kind of like messed with my human side, it messed with me because if I was going to quit and this was my homegirl and, and she was right there when we got the idol, I could have gave it to her if I was going to leave. You know, and now my Brenda being the type of personality that she is, I really truly believe that Brenda's going to go a lot further than she did on on our season. I stopped her from going further because she was, she was my competition. But I really feel deep in my heart Brenda's going to make it a long ways. Not only just in a game of Survivor, I believe that Brenda's going to go far in life. She is a beautiful soul. And I'm just like, I'm really rooting for her. And because she's not getting so much airtime right now, I think she made it really far. Mm-hmm. You think they're letting her play an under-the-radar game and she's going to wind up in the final five and no one's going to see it coming? I think that, well, you got to keep in mind, go put four to five days and wrap it up in the 45 minutes. So we don't know exactly what type of game Brenda's playing right now, mm-hmm. you know, but not really. she's not really speaking. She's not really talking too much. So I'm like, you know, she, she, has, to, she has to have made it pretty far. She had to. And she's, she's smart and she's physical. And on top of that, she's played the game before. And it, she's a force to be reckoned with. And she's also really, really good with her words. She's very articulate. So those, uh, those favorites better watch out for Brenda. <laughs> Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. What did you think about Marty? And are you surprised Marty hasn't come back? I'm not surprised that Marty didn't come back. Marty was, um, he wasn't that interesting. He, he, he made dumb moves. Like the whole finding the idol and hanging it up on a tree was like the dumbest thing that I had ever seen besides JT giving up his idol the way he did. <laughs> but I'm um, Marty. I love Marty. Marty and I were actually close. We we um we get along great. We just we just were both two strong-headed people playing a game for a million dollars. I won't be surprised. I'm su- I'm not surprised that he he hasn't returned for this season. But I will not be surprised if he were to return to another season. He's a wise man. Like I was surprised that he lasted as long as he did in the game because he could have been a force to be reckoned with too because he's so smart and articulate. And he, he could have went really far. But he talked too much. Like in the game of Survivor, you can't talk too much. You can only talk a lot in confessionals. Or if, you, if you're if you someone like me with an aggressive personality like that, then you can go ahead and talk mess because they're going to go, oh, ain't nobody going to vote for you. <laughs> you know, but when you're you're a threat. Mm-hmm. What did your family and friends think about your edit, and how did your edit affect your personal life? My family and friends thought it was funny, and they were like, you know, Deonta, you're the only reason why I watched that season. I was really sad when he quit because you could have made it far. And we're not quitters, but after watching your season and seeing all that rain, I totally get it. You know, my family stood behind me. Um, I'm the only person probably 
and, well, I am the only person in my family can say that I got an experience like that. I got to take a helicopter ride to the top of a volcano and have a picnic <laughs> and surf. I mean, I don't know how many people I can say I've actually met in life that have had the opportunity to do that, let alone get a passport. So getting a passport to, in this lifetime is also rewarding. My edit, I feel like it was very fair to, to my fight and my desire and my will for the game. How did it affect me in my life? Um, I was a PE teacher, as everybody knows, from the YMCA. My, my students will get really excited on Thursdays to come to class and ask me questions like, how did it feel and what happened with and is, are they really like that? That was amazing. But we were getting phone calls um, saying, oh, my child is in the Arcus class. I don't want her or him in there. She's a bad role model. But that's like, this is a game. I'm not thinking of my students when I'm playing this game for a million dollars. i got to do what I have to do for mm -hmm. me and mine. I wasn't thinking about that. So I ended up not working for the YMCA anymore, and that was, what, two years ago? And, but now I have a successful business. So things in life just happen. You can't question it. You, you can wonder, but they just happen the way they're supposed to happen. Like su Survivor, what I really, really took from it was the title. I have survived so much in my life. Um, as far as quitting, get, getting getting fired from jobs, losing mm -hmm. friends, gaining friends, doing a show like Survivor, getting a bad edit, um, reading trends about me that are negative and positive, seeing people put time and effort into drawing pictures of me or, make, or making hate messages, it still keeps me relevant. Mm -hmm. So what I take again from Survivor is that title. doesn't matter if I want it and, and was not the sole Survivor. I can walk around and say that I am a survivor. And that's, you know, almost worth a million dollars, or worth more, actually, if it allows you to have more riches in your life. Yeah, exactly. Let's go back in time a little bit. What would have happened if the tribes didn't get switched? What would, what would have happened with you and your game? If the tribes didn't get switched, Jill would have went home in this order. Jill would have went home. Um, I would have had some kind of control over it if the other tribe to knock Jill out and get Marty out, and then get Tyrone out. On my, on my, on my tribe, I would have, Brenda would have been knocked out. Sash would have stayed. Put it like this. I would have sent Delina home, Kelly B home. I would have sent Benry home, and I would have just had my, I would have just had Brenda, Sash, Chase, Purple Kelly, and myself. Mm -hmm. And that basically was our alliance. So I, that, that was our strong five. And we, and I ran that all the way until my, my exit. Um, Brenda didn't even see switching order. She didn't see it coming. <laughs> well, that's another thing. What did you make of Brenda saying she was too proud to scramble? I think that this is a, that lets you know right there that Nayanka had a lot of power because no matter what Brenda would have did, nobody would have said, okay, Brenda, we'll vote for Nayanka. So the only thing that Brenda could do was, I know I'm going home, I know I'm getting voted for, let me tell everybody now I have to hit an immunity idol. That was all she could do. I had that much power to where that's all she had left in her. That was the only scrambling she can do was write the hidden immunity idol picture next to my name. And as a matter of fact, that was actually my cover page or um, the cover for my Facebook for a long time. <laughs> and it, like I hold a lot of power, and when you have a lot of power like that, it's scary. Scary because it's, it, you have too much control. So if if your bricks come tumbling down, that's on you, and nobody else. So proud because she couldn't scramble because everybody was behind me because I had that idol. So it was more of an excuse that she basically said, "There really is nothing I can do. Game over. Let me go out with some dignity." Why did you vote for Fabio over Chase? Because it seemed throughout the editing that you had a closer bond with Chase than Fabio. Let me talk a little slow because I get real, I get anxiety when I talk about Chase. Chase played a crazy game. He was all over the place. He's here, he's there. He's like, okay, we're cool, we're cool, right? We're all right? Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, 10 minutes later, okay, we're cool, right? And it's like, it's just sit down. And it was so many times where I wanted to leave and Chase would be like, nay, just stay, nay, just stay. And I'll cry and I'm like, I'm ready to go. He'd be like, nay, just stay. So I gave him the idol for keeping me there, being my protect, my protector and my bodyguard and those encouraging words. We've cried together. We had a bond. I'll give him that. But as far as winning the game, he didn't deserve it because he played a crazy game. Fabio deserved it. 
Fabio just got on my nerves. He became like a little brother to me. We had a secret alliance that nobody knew about. The last three challenges, he walked in with the mini necklace on it. On, I'm like, how can I not vote for him? And then before I went into to voting, I asked him one question. How did it feel when he saw his mom? When he broke down crying, I broke down crying because if I would have stayed, I would have seen my dad. Mm -hmm. So I made another connection with Fabio right there. So if anybody was deserving out of that final three, it is Fabio. And I will stand to that to the day I die. Fabio deserves that. Why did Sash get zero votes? Sash was Sash was more of a, how can I put it, like a, a snake in the grass. He did things secretly, and other people knew that he was doing things secretly. You didn't know what to expect with Sash, but you, Sash is definitely somebody you wanted on your team. It's like the Black Widow. You don't know what to expect. Like, you can, you can get bit, or he could protect you. So he was the perfect person. Like, they were smart with taking, taking him to the final three instead of Holly, because Holly would have gave some, some uh, motivational speech or some crap, mm -hmm. and he would have won. Sash was somebody that you can just use as a seat filler. What did you think of Jane and Holly, these two older women that were very, very strong? Holly, to me, I mean, all I can say is, Sometimes I feel like she's BSing. Like, even even now, you know, it's three years later, these motivational speeches are, like, they're cool and everything, but let's be real, you are about to quit. And on top of you quitting, you took somebody's shoes and put sand in them and put them in an ocean. You giving them back some ostrich shoes at a reunion, honey, we all just got our 10 grand. Mm -hmm. We all got it. We know our $10,000 dollars check, so hell yeah, I'll buy us some shoes too. But that <laughs> still does the fact that you were about to quit and you put some shoes in the ocean. Now, granted, yeah, I quit. I walked away from the game, and she stayed. But we can only ride that way for so long. Let's get back to the reality of you stealing somebody's shoes and putting them in the ocean. Well, how does that compare to you stealing the flower? Hey, I was playing a game. If everybody had to starve and I got, and I got food hidden in the forest, that's my game. Did you, um, <laughs> did you think that there would be consequences for that, or did you think that they wouldn't rat you out, or what was your logic I, behind that? Two, so there was a, well, I ate two big, huge mangoes, me and Alina. We um, had some oranges and some apples. And um, I was going to make some tortillas in, a, in the middle of the forest by myself. So if anything, the target was still on my back, you know, for my lines. My lines going, damn, now you have the, uh, the hitting the mini guy. kept doing the stupid like that. So even though you did that, we still go vote Alina off because I was still the queen. So mm -hmm. my little minions protected me. But they're like, you can't be doing that no more, or we really gonna have to be gone. You got to, we got to send you home with the idol. So they protected me. But I knew that there was gonna be some kind of consequence. Like everybody was gonna scold me or do some family thing, which they did. You know, that was like my saddest day, because everybody was like, Nianka who? We don't know who Nianka is. So that's kind of like, you know. But again, I did all of it. I'm still in stock. I'm telling people. I'm telling the one-legged girl to keep her leg away from the fire. I'm eating everybody. <laughs> I'm hiding flower, and I'm telling I'm, I'm I'm telling everybody screw you, and I never got voted off. Well, I mean, you played your personality, and it would have taken you to the final three, which I think that's a very interesting strategy. But it seems to work, just being yourself and being true to yourself. And it's carried me far in my life. Like three years later, I'm able to to give my testimony. I'm able to say this is what I went through. This is what I've lost, but this is what I've gained. And I have so many people that have been standing behind me um, and still rooting for me and still giving me positive energy. And I go to charity events and I meet people and they're like, Nianca, you're nothing like how you're portrayed on TV. And I'm like, well, that was a game for a million dollars. What would you do? It, it's, it's just really hard to say the things that you'll do because not too many people are, are thrown in an, in an activity such as Survivor where you have the chance, like, I had one in twenty, a one in twenty shot in a million dollars. Then it went to one in eight shot in a million dollars. There's not too many people that can ever say that they've had those type of chances mm -hmm. of being that close. So you 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 don't you don't think straight. You don't think straight out there. You're not eating. You know you can't get on the phone and talk to mom and get some advice. You can't call your homegirl down the street. Can can we have a drink? I need to talk. I need to get some things off my chest. No, you're you're playing this game by yourself, and you have to trust no one. So you can't, that's why I say you, there's no way you can prepare for something like that because you can't starve yourself 
on an island by choice and just put a million dollars go, okay, I can get that out there, I just give you 39 days by myself. No, you're actually playing a mind game. It's, it's, Survivor is chess with physical activities. Yeah, 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 this is a curveball question I ask every person I have on the podcast. Just take a moment and prepare yourself mentally. Can you do any celebrity impressions? No, I can't. <laughs> Are there any you, can, you would like to try for us or, you know, maybe make fun of Jeff Probst, maybe make fun of Tyrone, maybe make fun of Chase, maybe make fun of Jane? Oh, the only way I can, um, see, I could do Uncle Dan real good. But I would have to be in person. I would have to walk on my knees because he was walking on nubs. Jane, <laughs> dude, Jane, I would have to pick up, I would have to pick up, like, a, I would have to hold back on a rope. Like, I can't do, like, their actual, like, things that they say. I can just, like, actually, like, act them out. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not boring, though. Like, you really need to, you really need to be around me so I can, like, I can do everybody's impression. Benry's black, by the way. He's an honorary Negro. So if you ever hang around Benry, you're like, you are so not a white boy. Everybody root for Brenda. A fan source is favorite. Root for her. If you ever see her up there for that 10 grand for Sprint, root for her. You can follow Doggy Paws on Twitter at Doggy Paws World. You can also Facebook us at Doggy Paws. We also have a Doggy Paws World on there as well. We also have Instagram, Doggy Paws, and we're also on Flickr. So just follow us. And, I mean, support me, support the dogs, and support my journey. Is there anything else you would like to cover that we haven't had a chance to talk about? Mm-hmm. Um, if, there's, if there's anybody out there that wants to start um, a petition to get me back on the show, go ahead. I'm all for it. <laughs> I want on all villains. Give me a villain season. It can be you and Colton and Russell. I think that would be very entertaining. I would love to hear you just backtrack them the entire time. I think that would just be worth the season alone. Even if you were only on it for a couple episodes, just you backstabbing Russell when Russell told you to do something. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> oh, what was your best not seen on screen moment? Um, whew, I've had I had a lot. Um, before every challenge, um. The the tribe will get in a circle and we'll pray together. Brenda and I will go jogging down the beach to do a warm up because I was a PE teacher, personal trainer, and track coach. We'll do a warm up and we'll sit there and talk strategy. Um, you'll see me crack off the of Dan's back, give him massages. I would weave um, out of out of the pontons. I would weave blankets and pillows for everyone. I even made a hammock. Um, I did a lot of I did a lot of resourceful things that were beneficial for us, but they didn't show it because you know. I believe that if I didn't quit, they would have showed those good things. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope for the best, and thank you so much, Nyanka, for coming on. Thank you so much. I love you, Australia. All right. Bye.